A newlywed couple seeking excitement in a moving car crashes into an oncoming truck and causes an explosion. The shockwave of the explosion overturns a steel box in the truck containing a mysterious cargo for the military. Suddenly the door opens, and as the soldiers cautiously approach the box, a muscular monster bursts out and viciously bites the soldiers. Rather than dying, they become extremely bloodthirsty with reopened eyes. Then, they follow the highly intelligent zombie king to take over Las Vegas. How could the gamblers of Las Vegas care about the crisis outside the game? Three days later, a kingdom of millions of zombies is created, and the few survivors are their prey. The government sends a large number of troops to take over the city, but they all become food for the zombies and suffer heavy casualties. In order to prevent the virus from spreading to other cities, the government mobilized a large number of containers to blockade Las Vegas. A few months later, the government decides to drop a nuclear bomb on Las Vegas to solve the zombie crisis once and for all. On Independence Day, four days from now, the quarantine camps outside the container wall have also received evacuation orders from the government, and those detained here are suspected infected. The soldiers on guard duty don't care if they live or die. If they want to leave, they have to pay money or have a temporary health certificate issued by the government. Kate is a volunteer in the quarantine zone. Her father, Scott, was a special forces captain who won the highest military honor in the war against the zombies. However, her mother was infected with a zombie virus. Scott ended his wife's life because he was afraid she'd go out and bite someone. This incident has become a permanent pain for Kate, and her relationship with her father has been shattered since then. Scott also retired from the Special Forces. Meanwhile, Scott was approached by Tanaka, a Japanese businessman. Scott was working at a hamburger joint and was having a hard time. Tanaka's purpose of the trip is to ask Scott to retrieve his $100 million from an underground vault. In zombie-ridden Las Vegas, Tanaka promised to pay Scott $50 million if he could get the money back in 96 hours. After much deliberation, Scott agrees to Tanaka's request so that his daughter can live happily ever after, but he can't get the money from the zombies on his own. Scott found his former subordinates Maria and Vandero and promised to split $15 million between them when the job was done. Third is helicopter pilot Marianne, who will fly to the ends of the earth if you pay her. Number 4, Tuzman, who kills zombies on Libby's stream when he's bored, and Scott managed to get him for only half a million dollars. The fifth is Dieter, the locksmith, who is interested in the vault lock and wants to be the first to open it. The team assembles and quickly meets up with Tanaka, but before the battle begins, the team has to rehearse. Because this time, the enemy is a bloodthirsty zombie, Tanaka shows them where the vault is and how to get in and out. Scott explains to the rookies how to kill a zombie by blowing their brains out. When everything is ready, Tanaka's bodyguard suddenly wants to join them. They immediately realize that this is Tanaka's eyes on them. But the first order of business was to get through the quarantine camps on the outskirts of the city. Scott enlisted the help of his daughter, who was working at the camp, and promised her $15 million when he was done, so Kate could help the refugees in the camp. So Kate took the group to meet Lily, the coyote of the camp. Lily used to take people to the zombie city to make money. Just as everyone was getting ready to leave, Kate suddenly realized that one of the mothers she was caring for had snuck into the zombie city to get some money for her child. Kate asked to join the team to look for her. With Lily leading the way, they walk through a hidden shipping container and enter the zombie city. Las Vegas is already devastated and full of zombies. Within a few steps, they come across a zombie tiger. Lily quickly signaled the group to take cover. This tiger is a pet tamed by Zombie King to guard the borders of Zombie City. Anyone who wanted to enter the city had to kill the tiger or pay a tribute. As Zombie King had decreed, Lily then shot a guard from the quarantine camp, who was following him and threw him on the open ground as a tribute. Shortly after, two zombies come running from the distance, and they look very different from the normal zombies. They are the Alpha Zombies. Unlike the Shamblers, the Alpha Zombies can think, are organized, and move quickly. They are a high-level existence among the zombies. They watch in horror as the Alpha Zombies drag the guard away. Only Tanaka's bodyguard smiles. Then they continue on their way. Zombie King is standing high above them. Watching their every move, Scott and the others make their way through the houses to a secret passageway filled with zombies. These are the lowest level, the Shamblers, who sleep here during the day to avoid the sunlight. Scott lights a glow stick to illuminate the ground and guide the team as they slowly move forward. However, Tanaka's bodyguard intentionally threw the glow sticks into the small crowd of zombies, causing her to wake them up. By the time Scott and the others arrive, the scene is already chaotic, and she's become a zombie meal. Scott immediately rushes the group out into the hot sun. This crumbling building is the former Las Vegas casino. On the first floor, they found multiple copies of the vault drawings. Scott realized that Tanaka had sent several waves of people before they even entered the city. 
he starts to wonder what Tanaka is up to, but Tanaka's bodyguard says he has no idea. Scott then starts assigning jobs to people. He doesn't want to wait until dark when all the zombies wake up. Maria takes Mary into the roof to start the helicopter. The bodyguard and Lily will bar the door and keep an eye out. Scott and his daughter go to the backup generator to light up the blockade. The rest of us and the locksmith go straight to the vault. Scott's side of the operation went smoothly, and the Vegas building was lit up in no time. Locksmith and his team arrived in front of the vault, but Lily and the bodyguard had another problem. The alpha zombie they met before has appeared again. She is the zombie queen of the zombie army. Lily puts her gun on alert, but the bodyguard seems to be interested in zombie queen. He shoots a rope to tie zombie queen to the ground. The two of them then team up to take out any zombies that come to help. But what the bodyguard did next surprised Lily. He pulls out a tool and quickly cuts off zombie queen's head. It was only now that the bodyguard revealed the purpose of his trip. He was commissioned by Tanaka and the government to get the head of Zombie King or Zombie Queen. Then they can create an army of zombies to become the ultimate weapon in future wars. As for the $200 million, they don't care. Marianne, who started the helicopter on the top floor, found a lot of malfunctions that would take a long time to repair. What's worse, they learn on TV that the president has been pressured to stagger Blast Day from Independence Day, moving it up by 24 hours. That meant they only had 90 minutes. Scott rushed his team to meet the locksmith, but the noise they make disrupts the locksmith's rhythm. The locksmith was furious, saying that if he made one more mistake, the gate would be closed forever. He demands absolute silence for the next half hour. Meanwhile, Zombie King sees the body of Zombie Queen. He got close to Zombie Queen's stomach and listened carefully and realized that there was no more movement. So he became furious. Oh my god, this female zombie is pregnant. Luckily, the locksmith was able to open the vault door and there were piles of cash inside. The crowd was in a state of euphoria. However, Zombie King is already leading the zombie army. By the time Scott regained his senses, his daughter Kate had already disappeared. He knew Kate must have gone to find the mother. Maria is worried that he can't do it alone and insists on going with him. As the elevator opens, Maria's neck is snapped by a zombie. Scott shoots back. The loud noise attracts the rest of the group. Everyone realizes the danger is imminent and decides to evacuate. The bodyguard leads them to the stairway. However, the bodyguard, who was the first to climb out of the passage, locked the bars and planned to escape alone with the valuable head of Zombie Queen. Van der Rohe and the locksmith were temporarily separated from the group because of their greed for money. When they get the money and plan to leave, Zombie King has already arrived with a group of zombies. They immediately drew their guns and shot, but the clever Zombie King has already put on a steel mask and is unharmed. Zombie King is so powerful that Van der Rohe, who is physically strong, is defeated. When he was about to be bitten by the Zombie King, the locksmith suddenly knocked him down with a wrench. He then quickly pushed Van der Rohe into the vault and closed the door behind him. The locksmith was caught by Zombie King because he couldn't escape in time. On the other hand, the bodyguard, who escaped, checked the trophies but realized that the head had been switched out of the bag and disappeared. Before he can grieve, the zombie tiger appears in front of him and treats him as a meal. Lily cuts a hole in the wall with a chainsaw, and they escape to the first floor lobby. The place is already surrounded by zombies. A bloodbath ensues. During the battle, YouTuber Guzman is bitten by a zombie and realizes that there's nothing he can do to save himself. After Scott leaves the crowd out, Guzman pulls all the grenades on his body and dies with the zombies. In the meantime, Scott and Lily make their way to the roof. Marianne, the helicopter pilot, is here to meet them. Zombie King is coming after them. Lily took out Zombie Queen's head from her bag to threaten Zombie King. So it's her who switched the Queen's head in order to buy time for Scott to find his daughter. Lily stayed here to keep Zombie King at bay and let Scott take the helicopter to leave first. Scott had to board the helicopter and wait. While Lily was distracted, Zombie King threw his iron bar and nailed her to the wall. Lily then throws Zombie Queen's head off a high building, eliminating Zombie King's attempts to save his wife. Meanwhile, Kate found the young mother in a high building, but she doesn't know that Zombie King is already furious and has sent all the zombies to search the whole city. They plan to evacuate, but they meet Zombie King in the corridor. Kate shot back, but was soon cornered. At the critical moment, Scott arrived in time and shot the gas pipe, blowing away the Zombie King. Then they boarded a helicopter to get the hell out of there. They were minutes away from launching the bomb, but before the helicopter can pull up, Zombie King comes after them again. He leapt onto the helicopter and fought with Scott. During the struggle, Marianne was shot once. Luckily, she was able to fly the helicopter out of the quarantine zone. The trajectory of the bomb passed right over their heads. The whole city was blown to smithereens. Scott took advantage of Zombie King's blinking eyes and shot him in the head. The helicopter crashed to the ground in a heat wave. Only Scott and his daughter Kate survived. 
However, during the fight with Zombie King, Scott was bitten, and soon he would be mutated. As the sun set, Kay looked on in complete relief for her father. Scott feels the last of the warmth, and pulls some dollars out of his pocket for his daughter. Soon Scott began to mutate. Kate had to shoot her father. I thought this was the end of the story, that the zombie virus would go up in smoke with the nooks. But then Van Der Roe crawled out of the rubble. He accidentally escaped death by staying in the vault, but he suffered a small injury during the fight with Zombie King and became a carrier of the virus. It looks like the battle between humans and zombies is far from over. Let's watch a movie together to experience a different life. You can subscribe to save review and leave comments.